In the beginning, archetypes were primitive, like Swamp and Lava Battle Guard, cards which specifically referenced other cards by name. This clunkiness can be seen in the wording of Eternal Soul, how so much of the Dark Magician support was created in isolation. With the dawn of elemental heroes, and by extension, the hero super archetype, cards began to have similar naming convention, outside of Light Sworns in Spanish-speaking countries. In 5Ds, there was a focus on type support, like the extensive support towards plants. But other synchro support archetypes arose, like synchrons and resonators. In Zexel, perhaps the tightest archetype homogenization occurred. Sharing nomenclature, attribute, level, and type, Satellarnites were remarkably focused design. Although Butter Spies might infiltrate the Satellar deck, it was not uncommon for only members of the archetype to constitute the entire monster lineup in the main deck. During Arc V and Vrains, design space changed, with Pendulum and Link monsters pushing the game to more generic cards. Although Cleforth operated especially well with only members of its archetype. In many ways, archetypes are similar to the aforementioned parasitic mechanics. Decks tend to be constructed out of the better members of an archetype, and strategies which precipitate from cards are pretty linear. But I think there are a few problems which make archetypes a worse transgression against design space. The first is that archetypes are not created equally. Digibugs or crash bugs are terrible. Some archetypes just function as filler in sets. I'm not sure exactly why there's so much filler in booster sets as very rarely are the booster sets designed to be drafted. It just seems like Konami wastes design space and paper on underpowered decks. Not only that, they will probably never be good. Konami is notorious for starting an idea then either releasing lackluster support like with Vindreds, or worse, never releasing new support like with Iron Chains. Black Wings and Elemental Heroes continuously get more support, but I'm not sure if there is ever going to be another color of Baboon of the Forest. I am not saying that archetypes are bad for the game as a whole. On one hand, it is negative for deck building and strategy. On the other hand, decks can still be made ignoring archetypes. Clown Blade was a great deck engine, which was splashed into a lot of different decks. But to me, I think that the problem is one of the way the game is designed. The design space of archetypes is very closed. Members play well with one another, but most of the text is in reference to other members. It is really weird to actually read the paragraph of text on the card and learn that cards have increased utility, like how Black Rose Dragon has a second effect based on plant monsters. There is one archetype in particular which comes to mind, though. It is a bit of a stretch to call them an archetype, though, as the members don't play well together. To tell the truth, they actually subvert the entire concept. I'm going to talk about the accidental genius of Kawaki Meru next time.